Coronavirus now. A new CDC study finds people who were not fully vaccinated this spring or summer were more than 10 times more likely to be hospitalized and 11 times more likely to die of COVID. Joining us live now, UCSF infectious disease specialist, Dr. Peter Chin Hong. Doctor, thanks for doing this. My pleasure, Alan. Thanks for having me on. You bet. First, can you talk more about this uh, CDC report? How much does this strengthen the argument for getting vaccinated? Well, I think, Alan, it mirrors what I've been seeing in my, the hospital myself. I've been on the inpatient service the last few weeks, and by far we see more than 90% of people we're in the ICU with serious disease are the unvaccinated folks. The few folks who are vaccinated coming in, they're mainly comprised of immunocompromised individuals and the very old uh, or elderly patients who've been vaccinated. I'm just wondering for a second here, the unvaccinated, are you able to talk to them? Do they tell you, I wish I had gotten the shot? What do they say? I think they fall into two camps. There's certainly the group of folks who um, wish they had gotten the vaccine. Usually one member of the family, uh, you know, makes the decisions and for the household. So if that person didn't get it and didn't want to get it, then the mm. other household members didn't. When one of them gets sick, the other uh, folks generally want to get it. Then there's, though, however, a hardcore group who uh, think that they didn't have COVID. I think that's really not as common, mm -hmm. but probably about 10 to 15 percent. Still a factor. Okay, there's a second study I want to ask about. It found that Moderna was more effective at preventing the hospitalizations compared to Pfizer and the J&J. &J. If someone hasn't gotten their first dose, should they choose Moderna or maybe choose Moderna for their booster? Um, it's really too early to tell the, the one, I mean, uh, certainly the study from the CDC released today in MMWR does suggest that if you got Moderna, uh, you have a less likely chance of going to the hospital than if you got Pfizer or J&J. &J. But what they didn't do was control for time. In other words, Pfizer was released early, mm -hmm. earlier by more than a month compared to Moderna. So it could be that when you're looking at data between June and August, it may not be that the vaccines don't stand up well against each other. It's just a matter of time. And if you got something earlier, it may mean particularly for older individuals, because when they looked at the age group over 75, that's where the differences were larger. Um, uh, so that, you know, that may be the issue. The other issue that people are talking about is the dose. So Moderna had a higher amount of mRNA things in the vaccine compared mm -hmm. to Pfizer. And then the third issue, which I personally believe might be the, the, the clincher, is the duration between shots. So Pfizer, three weeks, Moderna, four weeks. We know from the UK that when they had to give an interval of even as long as eight weeks to 12 weeks between doses, that the people who got a later shot for their second shot tended to have more antibodies. So the CDC studies changing all these antibody-like studies into actual hospitalization outcomes. Yeah, it's pretty nuanced. Um, Got to ask you about President Biden's push. He's pushing governors to get all teachers vaccinated because the younger kids, of course, can't get the shots yet. Some parents actually pushing for going back to the remote learning. Is that something we're going to be facing if teachers and the older students don't get vaccinated and we don't get the approval for the younger kids soon? Definitely. So I have lots of thoughts on that, Alan. But, uh, you know, in terms of good news scenarios, uh, San Francisco Department of Public Health, as people may know, released data yesterday showing that there were zero intra-school transmissions in the kids, uh, even though kids were infected, of course, but they came from the community. And, you know, I think in San Francisco, what you're seeing happen is more than 90% of 12 to 16-year-olds are vaccinated now and a large proportion of teachers. So if you protect or build that wall of immunity around the under 12 set, you are really going to make them remain healthy so that they can focus uh, themselves on learning in the schools. Well, you know, the, the rest of the country should really look at San Francisco as case study and, and, and follow those numbers, see what happens. Exactly, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of, you know, Bay Area and I, I think if we are going to achieve community herd immunity at some point, you know, it, it, the Bay Area is going to be the test case, I think, for the rest of the country. Let's hope so. Cutting edge. All right, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, thank you so much. Have a good weekend.